Hey guys, Casual Chrono here. As part of my character development series, I had a few requests for Radius AS, so that is who we're going to cover today. If you pull Radius Normal Style, you can side grade her to her AS style. Her AS style, Flare Knight, is probably one of the best, if not arguably the best, tank in the game currently as of March 2024. And I'm going to show you why. So Radius AS has access to a bunch of skills. The ones that I tend to use, I really only use two for the most part. But whenever you get a new character, it's a good idea to look at their skills so that way you know how to gear them. So Prominence Purge is one of these skills. It inflicts rage, so it's going to direct all attacks to Radius. It's preemptive, which means it does not rely on her speed at all. It also boosts her physical resistance, not magic, for five turns, and also gives her status immunity one turn. And then if you are in a zone, anytime she's hit by an attack of any kind, she heals all the party members for their health, for half their health, and restores their mana, and grants status immunity one time. So she is great when she's in a zone, when she's not in a zone, not quite as great, but you definitely want to have a zone for her. When you look through all of the other skills that she has access to, the other one that stands out to me is Overwhelm. It reduces the enemy's power by 30% and it stacks three times. Now, the way the math works in the game, that doesn't mean their power gets reduced by 90%. It's a different calculation, but either way, it stacks, which means you can reduce the enemy's power greatly. Against magic attackers, that really doesn't help much, but against physical attackers, this is great because, remember, she's also improving her own physical resistance by 70%. In addition, she gives a barrier to all party members that reduces damage by 70% once. And then, when she's in a zone, she gains a shield based on her max HP, and it's a, it's a flat double. So if her hit points are 4,748, she gains a shield for 4,748. So to me, that screams, I want to try and get her health as high as possible to get that shield. Because I'm going to be casting Overwhelm over and over and over again to get to that three stacks. So as long as I'm casting it, I might as well give myself a really cool shield. So those are the two abilities I use the most. She does have a third ability called Chivalry that does not show up here because it's her default attack. Now if you give her something like a Fire Sword or anything that changes the first attack, like the, the Fire Spirit Sword, if you have it uh, upgraded at all, will change the basic attack to something else, she will lose chivalry. So if you're not seeing chivalry appear when you're in fights, double check to make sure that your gear is not basically overriding it. So other skills, she is a tank. You want her to survive. So her first two skills really focus on her physical resistance. Elemental Barrier can improve her type resistance by 50%. It also inflicts rage. So I have Elemental Barrier as my third choice. And then she actually does have an ability to inflict pain on all enemies and it ignores their target resistance. It also restores her health, but a lot of times her reactions uh, to getting hit restore her health. So that part's not as important to me. But if you want a pain setter, Technically, Radius can function as a pain setter as well. There are other options. You can try to make her an attacker. She does have a few abilities that damage herself in the process, but she can attack uh, an enemy. She does slash attacks. She also has Dazzling Slash Stance. If she is knocked out of the party and comes back in, her Valor Chant will deplore Slash Stance which can be good, but if you have any other stance going, like fire stance, anything like that, and you don't want to mess that up, since she's the tank, knockbacks usually go to her first. So she's knocked into the back row, you have to move her forward, and suddenly you lose your fire zone because she deploys slash stance. So do keep that in mind. The chivalry effect is probably the main reason she is just an incredible tank. She begins the battle with three Aegis stacks and that's all you can get. There's no way to get more. 
And when she uses one of those and casts Chivalry, all attacks for that entire turn will go to her and she can't die. So there's absolutely no way that you will die on that particular turn. There's a few bosses that have an end attack that bypasses rules like that, but they're extremely rare. So knowing that we need to figure out what to give her. Right now she has nothing. Since she is a tank, she's focused on survival. So you want to give her gear that improves her health or improves her defenses. As far as weapons, most weapons obviously are offensive based. They give high crit rates or things like that, uh, type attacks. Speed, she doesn't really need speed that much because prominence purge is preemptive. So I'm not too concerned about building up her speed. I just want her to survive. And the best way for her to survive is that shield based on max health. So you want to do everything in your power to give her as much health as you can. As far as weapons, right now, it's relatively easy to get. There's a weapon called Illusion Speed. Now you have to collect materials to get it up to plus 10, but the Illusion Speed weapon improves your health. And when it's at level 10, she gains 1,000 health from it. The other weapon that I've used a lot in the past, once I find it, Miyaki's Sword. If you don't have Illusion Speed, Miyaki's Sword improves physical resistance, and when she does attack, she gains back a bit of health. So it's not quite as good as Illusion Speed in my opinion, but it does improve her physical resistance even more, making her harder to kill. So Miyaki's Sword is a good starter weapon, and if you can max out Illusion Speed, she gains 1000 health. As far as armor goes, anything that will improve her health is helpful. So things like the subspace bracelet gives her 300 extra health. That's not a bad one. Mujima Bangle actually just, if it's a long fight, will decrease damage over time. So that's not a bad one. The one I like to give her is the Elpis Bangle which if you run Omegopolis, another dungeon, over and over and over again, all you have to do to get this armor is get lucky and get golden screw or whatever it is. Um, actually, actually, I want to say it was a golden screw. And that's just a rare chance of dropping in the first area. So if you can get that and pick the Elpis Bangle, it improves her health based on her light points. So if I equip this, she has 120 life points. You'll notice that her health jumped up even more. It went from 5,700 to 6,300. So it jumped up about 600 points. And that's because she has 120 light. Obviously, if you have less light, it won't go up quite as much. And if you have more light, it'll go up even more. So now we have 6,000 health. For Grasta, and yes, we'll get to the badge in a moment. If you switch to the second category, the life section, there's all sorts of choices. If you're relatively new and don't have a lot of the advanced Grasta, I'd recommend just any Grasta that gives health. So I could give her, for example, using just the MP HP Restore Grasta, I could give her an extra 900 health just by equipping those. And those are pretty easy to get and awakening them just to the first level is all you need to activate their hit points. So it doesn't really matter what the effects are, but I basically just gave her an extra 300 health that way. So that is one type of Grasta you can use. Once you play the game longer, you have access usually uh, to more advanced Grasta. So for example, like Victory Celebration, it gives regen and MP regen, and you can upgrade the ores as well. If you have the ability to upgrade Grasta, Grasta and try to upgrade one of those, let's see if I have any of the ore. Uh, where's Radius Radius? Okay. Oh, I do, okay. HP ore. If you have any HP ore, looks like I have six at the moment, 
you can upgrade them an additional 300 points. So that would be 300 times 3 ore. So I could get her health up another 900 points. That would put her around 8,100 health. And then badge-wise, you want to find any badges that give her health. So there's a bunch of them out there. This one is uh, 500 health continual regen. Uh, there's just some basic ones that give like 300 and 200 health. Things like the Life Spring Badge are good. That gives 1,000 health. It reduces her attack by 10%, but she's not really a damage dealer. So that one, that part doesn't really matter. 100 health or 1,000 health would be awesome. And so forth. So Giant's Badge has 1,000 health. It reduces her speed. Again, one of her two abilities that you use all the time is preemptive, so it doesn't matter how low her speed is. And that 1,000 health is great. And so forth and so on. So there's some 300s, 200s. I finally got enough uh, cat stamps in the Phantom Crystal Dimension to get just a flat 100 uh, or 1,000 health HP badge. The ones I like to use are from Toto's Theater World. Toto's the Theater World has 2,000 HP badges, but it reduces some other stat by 50%. I could reduce her mana or her speed. And I tend to reduce speed. Though with her, when she gets attacked, remember if she's in a zone, she restores mana. So you could probably get away with that one as well. If you only have one slot, so right there we already have 9,000 health. And if you only have one slot open, and if you've put on the 300 HP ores, you could break 10,000 at this point. In my case, because I have 120 light points, I have a second badge slot. So I'm going to throw on just another one of those 2,000 health badges. You can tell I use them a lot because when I get to that section, a bunch of characters have those equipped. So Now her speed has dropped all the way down to 63, which is really, really low. You can pretty much assume that she'll go last every turn. However, she now has 11,000 health. And remember, that's just with some basic Grasta. It could be 12,000 if I upgraded with the ores. So let's see this in action. To help me out with this, I have a character that can set a zone, because remember, Overwhelm won't give her that shield if she's not in a zone. So we are going to move the little Lily out and set a crystal zone on the first turn. And we're going to test this out with Azuka's manifest fight. So we need to set a zone, so we're going to cast Benediction, and we are going to hit Overwhelm. Because her speed is so low, the Little Lily zone will definitely go first. There's the zone. There's Overwhelm. And then we're going to get the Little Lily out of there, so it's just going to be Radius. So we've cast Overwhelm once. That's given her a barrier that's reduced the enemy's power by 30%. And you can see the stack right there. I'm going to go ahead and hit Prominence Purge now. Because when she's in a zone, whenever she's attacked, she will restore her health. And you'll see that in action. Incinerate. It's preemptive, so it goes first. Incinerate. She was attacked, and she just restored her health and mana. Prominence Purge lasts for five turns, so now that it's been cast, I can continue to stack Overwhelm. There's her reaction. She gets healed for 6,000 health, restores 89 mana, and I've just stacked a second Overwhelm. Third Overwhelm. Restores health. Izuka's weakened even further. At this point, I could cast another Prominence Purge. Usually in fights, I just keep an eye on that three stacks right there, and when I see it starting to fade, I know that's when I need to cast an Overwhelm. Now, 
I can cast an elemental barrier if I'm worried about elemental attacks. I can cast a prominence purge again. Preemptive, it always goes first. There she goes, restoring herself. You know, because she gets a mana back, she's at full mana. I could keep this up forever and ever. I see that that three stack is fading, so now is the time to do another overwhelm. We can win this together. And if at some point I click on the status bar and check on her status, it will show you her shield. Her shield has 11,000 health. She has 11,000 health. So that basically means she has 22,460 health, if I did the math right, right now. And her attacker is doing, what, 30s, 20s, something like that. I can go ahead and give her pain. There you go, have some pain. But basically she can keep this up indefinitely. If you don't mind very, very long fights, you could just sit around and attack, let pain do its work, and slowly the enemy would die. But I don't like long attacks too much. All right, I can see it's fading, so overwhelm again. And in general, you get the idea. Now, I mentioned chivalry. You can see it's right there in the first bar, unless you have a weapon or something that replaces the basic attack. So, and it says, consume one Aegis to preemptive guard on user until end of turn. So it's preemptive as well. It doesn't matter what her speed is. And you can always check her status to see her stacks. Or if you just wait around down here, you can see the three right there with the little sphere thing. So I have three times during this fight that I can use chivalry. If I use it, it just looks like that. And then all attacks will go to her. Now the turn is over, so chivalry is no longer in effect. It only lasts that one turn. And you can see I have two stacks of it left. So let's go ahead and overwhelm. We'll prominence purge, and then we'll bring out the little lily so we can wrap this fight up. We can win this together. But that's kind of the basics. If she's built with a lot of health, that between her overwhelm and her health, she gains that barrier, and she basically doubles her health. So if you beef her up with a ridiculous amount of health, when you can finally cast overwhelm, it gets doubled, which is awesome. And then, every time she's attacked, not only herself, but the entire team gets health and mana back. And if she's attacked four times in a turn, she restores the team four times. It's awesome. So let's move her back in. Let's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's absorb blood. Now remember, all of those abilities happen because we're in a zone. If you don't have a zone set, then she definitely is a lot weaker. All right, uh, let's see. We'll do... Photon Messiah. We're running out of stacks of Overwhelm, so we're gonna keep that going. But notice the Lil Lily got healed as well. We'll promise land and promise purge. You'll notice that the Lil Lily also had a barrier and she took very little damage. And that is because Overwhelm gives a barrier to all party members. So if there was only one single horrible attack, it would have reduced that damage by 70%. And in that case, it doesn't matter if it's a magic attack or a physical attack. It's just a flat 70% damage reduction, no matter what. So let's see, let's uh, lunatic. Take this. Uh, 
And let's see, I can't sword in heart. Wonder how much Photon Messiah will do in just one swing. Let's find out. Uh, let's Prominence Purge. No, oh, not bad. Alright, we'll do one more and try and wrap this up. So those are the basics of Radius. You want to build her with as much health as possible. So let's do that and pair her up with some free characters. So let's beef up Radius even more. Over time, you should get stronger Grasta. I have Victory Celebration, and I've upgraded it with the Light Shadow HP Ore that you can get in Omegopolis. Victory Celebration will give her a regen, and the Light Shadow Points, as long as a character has more than 50 Light or Shadow Points, this Ore will upgrade it better than the HP Ore will. I also have... HP Restore and MP Consumption, both with the Light Shadow HP. So 300 health, and then Light Shadow HP based. So now she has 12,850 health, and if I ever draw a dupe that would give her more Light or Shadow points, her hit points would naturally go up, not only because of the Grasta, but also because of the Elpis Bangle. So here we have a very, very powerful radius and a bunch of free characters. In this particular party, we have Garu with his manifest weapon, Flame Lord's Ring, and Fallen Wings badge, basically to improve his intellect and type attack. Skills he has are Explosion, Fiendish Flame, and Burning Shield. We have Aisha, and she has the Dreamy Staff, Plasma Ring, and one HP badge. Basically, she is there to set a fire zone with Flame Serenade, and then she can buff the team with Jewel Concerto and debuff the characters with Eternal Fantasia. Actually, Eternal is the one that buffs the team, and Jewel Concerto wherever it is, uh, reduces fire resistance. We have Nona, who has Miyaki's bow, a forget-me-not ring, which is her personal ring, and just an HP MP badge. Again, a little bit survivability. Uh, she has three Grasta that give her 900 health as well. And she is there basically for healing and improving some resistances and stuff like that. And then we have radius. She has all the gear that gives her over 12,000 natural health, which means when she casts Overwhelm, as long as she's in a zone, she has the effect of 25,000 health. In the background, we have Aldo. Really, any sword user can equip Robust Body Sword. That improves health by 300 for any sword user. So he is providing Radius an extra 300 health through Shared Grasta. There's not much else Shared Grasta-wise that improves health for Radius. So he has just a few other things. Um, you can equip Power of Regen Sword if you have it. That will give all sword users just Regen. She is a tank. She is taking damage. So if you don't have some of the more advanced Grasta, that's a nice kind of beginner one to have. And then I have Bivette in the background. Her Grasta are designed to beef up Garu's attacks. So what sidekicks are good? If you have a free team, you probably have Kurobo if you've opened up sidekicks. He's a great one if you have a fire team, because when anything takes fire damage, their power and intellect is permanently reduced by 25%. That does affect your own team, though, so if you're fighting something that does fire attacks on you, you're going to lose power and intellect as well. And then Iridian is free from the recent uh, Riz sagas, and you have the ability to change different Iridians. If you need healing, you can use the green Iridian. At the end of every turn, Iridian restores a little bit of health and a little bit of 
mana power. And when anything takes wind damage, they reduce power and intellect. Now, it's a fire team, so if I'm fighting something that does wind damage, it's going to hurt me, and I have no way of doing wind damage, so that aura is kind of worthless. But if you need the extra healing, the green iridian is a good choice. Now, the red one does fire attacks, and you'd figure with a fire zone, this would be a good choice. When anything takes magic damage, the resistance reduces as well. So this is a pretty good choice. In this case, Garu is doing magic damage, and it is a fire zone team, so fire iridian might be a good choice. And then the blue iridian is the defensive one. When hit points drop below 80%, everyone's resistance goes up, and it does uh, improves physical resistance and stacks three times. So he can really beef up physical resistance. So it's kind of your choice which Iridian to use, really dependent on the situation, but both of those uh, sidekicks are free and relatively easy to get. So that's why I've chosen them. So let's check out this team in action. We are in the Cordina Plains and we're going to attempt the Insula Ventorum 20,000 BC. It's weak to fire, but does have some general nuisances. So we are going to use the AF bar at the start of the fight to deploy fire zone. And we'll go ahead and improve wind resistance. For her, we don't need to heal the team yet. So we can basically give the team a barrier. And we can do one prominence purge to get that uh, healing reaction back. And then spam overwhelm. What we might do is just do three, three, two, two to make it simple. Then after that, doesn't, I don't know if this is a magic user or a physical user, but uh, either way, we do need pain though, so we can do an absorb blood during this process as well. So we'll just do uh, explosion to, well, let's see, it's null to shade, so, yeah, I guess we can just keep spamming two. It's a one move type of attack. We'll try to work in an absorb blood as well, but we definitely want to get one prominence purge and overwhelm going. So burn three, three. Two, two, then one, two, two. We'll try a one, and then we'll try to work in a four. It's pretty quick, and remember that Radius's speed is very low, so she doesn't get that many turns in an AF bar. So, three, three, two, two, two. To absorb blood and I did not get in the prominence purge all right redeploy fire zone do an explosion we will do pre hero and let's get that prominence purge in like we wanted Alright, we'll do another explosion. Blaze Concerto. We're going to heal the team. And we've got the Prominence Purge in. We got the Pain in. So now we can do some more Overwhelms. The soul still burns. She was attacked three times, so you see her healing the team three times.
We'll continue with our explosions. We've done everything we can here. We'll go ahead and yeah. fire attack for five turns. We'll just go ahead and sunburst again. We'll go ahead and cartello and we can either absorb blood, elemental barrier. We have a bunch of choices at this point. Overwhelm is not fading, so let's just go ahead and do an elemental barrier. Now, you'll notice that she was knocked out of the fight. When she comes back in, she's going to remove the fire zone. So, front line, front line. We'll do reduce damage taken, and we'll go ahead and do burning shield again. And there's the Slash Dance. So we'll go ahead and Overwhelm. Barrier. Put back Fire Zone. And... Explosion. And there she goes, healing the team. We'll go ahead and do an absorb... Actually, we'll do Promise Purge. It looks like it's cleared itself of the rage. So we don't need to do that anymore. We'll just keep Barrier. Blaze and... We'll do one more burning shield. The knockback is very definitely annoying. So we'll move them back into the front. Blaze and explosion. We'll go ahead and absorb blood, shield, fire zone, and we'll do our burning shield. Unfortunately, our fire zone setter was stunned for this turn. Fire zone, shield, we'll get overwhelmed. Notice the stacks are going away. Actually, let's elemental barrier it. Get, we need rage in there. Yeah, no, we'll do overwhelm. Explosion. You'll notice during the fight. His mana is a little bit low, but not horribly so. We'll prominence Purge, Shield, Reduce Resistance, and Explosion. Overwhelm, heal, sunburst, and explosion again. It'd be nice to try and work in some pain, but we definitely want to make sure that the team survives. I believe this boss has a 50% HP stopper. So now we can work in Absorb Blood, Defense, 
We've already done both of those, so let's just set fire zone just in case. An explosion. Ah, good timing. Alright, we hit the HP stopper. And because we chose to set fire zone during that time, we're in a fire zone. So we're actually in good shape right now. We have a full HP bar. We hit the HP stopper. We have pain, so this might be a good time to blow the AF bar. He will spam explosion. She will probably do one sunburst and then blaze concerto. We'll just have her do cartello. There's really not much that she can do. And we have two stacks of Overwhelm already, so we could work in a third really quick and then just spam Prominence Purge. So we'll have at least three fire attacks keeping the AF bar going at this point. So one, two, 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 and then just spam ones the entire time. One, two, 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 and spam one. One, 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 one. And the boss's health is pretty low. Was that enough? Looks like it might have been. Yep. So Insula Ventorum, according to the wiki, is I believe a level 9 super boss. And we just took him down with a free team. Not even any another styles used. That was Garu's normal style. And that was Nona's normal style. Now Garu did have his max level manifest. So, you know, that helped some. But overall, not a hard team to get. So that was Insula Ventorum with a free team. To showcase Radius in another fight, we are going to fight Suzette's True Manifest. This isn't her level 10 fight, this is her level 11 fight, the final, final fight. We're going to use the same free team. We don't have Aldo this time, and remember he had the robust body sword, Grasta. So that means Radius's health isn't the 12,800, this time it's only, and I say only, 12,500. So the real Suzette is the one on the right, so that's the one we have to kill. We're going to start off with Burning Shield, Fire Zone, and we are going to use Overwhelm because that reduces all enemies' power. And because her speed is so low, we should be in a Fire Zone at that point, so she should get her barrier right away. They start off already raged, so they should be fighting Radius. Now she's not healing anyone right now because she has not yet cast Prominence Purge. But we can do that now on turn two. So let's see, let's go ahead and Explosion, beef up the team. Yeah. We can give the team another barrier for one turn. Or we could do Restore, but we're gonna get Restore from Prominence Purge. So let's just have her continue that and we will Prominence Purge. She heals the team. She heals the team. So we're going to overwhelm again. We are going to do the damage barrier again. And this time we're going to blaze concerto it. And... Let's do, let's see, this is the third turn. Now let's just do another explosion. There you are. 
She heals the team. She continues to heal the team. And she continues to heal the team. We're going to absorb blood to get that pain going. Shield. And we'll go ahead and improve type attack for five turns. And we'll do burning shield again, get that wind resistance up. At this point, her defenses are so high, she's taking zero damage and still healing the team. So now, we have Pain, we have two stacks of Overwhelm, so we're going to do at least one more. But now would be a good time to blow the AF bar. We've rebuffed these, so we can basically just spam Explosion. And... We'll do Prominence Purge for the most part, but we will work in an Elemental Barrier and an Overwhelm. So we're going to do one, two, 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 then one, one, probably one at this point, and we'll try to work in Elemental Barrier. One, two, 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 one, 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 Elemental Barrier, and now just spam ones. Now at this point, there's new enemies on the field, and you notice they do not have rage. So we need to inflict rage on all enemies. We can do that with Elemental Barrier again, or Prominence Purge. At this point, we've already cast Elemental Barrier, so we're going to Prominence Purge. We are going to set a barrier. We have Fire Resistance down. So we might as well buff up the team again. Actually, we've done that recently too. Uh, I think this one does actually more damage. It's on all enemies anyway. And let's go ahead and reduce power. Prominence Purge is preemptive and we're in a zone. So now all attacks should be going to her. And she's keeping the team alive just fine. Now next what you're going to see, if we use Overwhelm, remember it affects all enemies. So all enemies are suddenly going to lose some of their power. The team is never hurting for mana, and as long as there's no attacks that completely wipe out a character, we're in pretty good shape. So we're going to absorb blood to get the pain going again. And just continue our assault. All right, we hit the 25% HP stopper. And now we have even more enemies to worry about. Which on the bright side means more chances for her to heal the team. All 
All right, at this point, we still have pain. We still have three stacks of overwhelm. We could continue our assault. We could blow the AF bar right now. We can prominence purge and make sure that all of them are raging against our 25,000 hit point tank. And prominence purge is preemptive. Doesn't really matter because we've gotten to the point where Garu can knock out the remaining 25%. So there was Suzette's true manifest done with a free team with Radius AS as the tank. Finally, to showcase Radius's chivalry effects, we are going to use Aldo's Astral Archive Tome. There we go. So some people have, I've noticed, have difficulty with hard mode. So I have a Manalka, Sukia, Ify, Radius, Aldo, and Violet team. This is one of my super boss teams. If you watch my February 2024 super boss team and go to the Manalka section, you can see the makeup, the gear, the Grasta, etc. So if we cast Chivalry on the very first turn, we're going to set Pain, set Fire Zone, and Rip and Tear. You will see Aldo going Berserk. And he'll continue going Berserk. However, because of Chivalry, she lives through all of it. So we are going to cast Chivalry again. And we'll boost the team's power, improve critical damage, and rip and tear. Chivalry always goes first, so it doesn't really matter what her speed is. Aldo's going to go berserk on her again, but there's nothing he can do. All attacks go to her, and she will live no matter what. Remember, she only has three chivalry uses. This is the third one. We're going to go ahead and, in her case, doesn't really matter. Reduce fire resistance and rip and tear again. It's over. If you have radius, you have three guaranteed turns to take down Aldo. And if you have DPS that can manage it, there is pretty much no way you're going to lose. So that's an example of how Reyes's chivalry makes her really, really, really powerful. Once you beat hard, of course you need very hard. Same team. Chivalry, Pain, Fire Zone, Rip and Tear. Exact same pattern as before. Poor Aldo, he tries so hard. Round two. Chivalry, beef up the team, beef up the team, and continue ripping and tearing. That's a lot of damage. Too bad it won't do any good. Now, I know I'm making this look easy, but Manalka is a pretty overpowered character. So do keep that in mind. But really, as long as you can focus on someone that can take him down each HP stopper, three chivalries is all you need for this fight. 
So there was Aldo in Very Hard. For Aldo's Stella mode fight, he needs to be in the front row. The very first moment of the battle, enemy Aldo will attack the entire team and do massive amounts of damage. And it's before you can even input commands, which means Radius's chivalry is kind of worthless. Now, the strategy I'm going to use also does require iffy, but this is advanced stuff. So, I basically make use of her revive abilities. So, we're going to go to allies and do Stella. Aldo is not equipped with his stellar skills, so this is kind of a sort of legit fight. Now because Aldo is there, enemy Aldo does not attack on the first turn, so I don't need to waste a chivalry right now. Right now, I could go ahead and do Overwhelm or Prominence Purge, Absorb Blood, etc. So we will go ahead and inflict Rage. We will do Pain Poison. We are going to reduce enemy Aldo's physical resistance and rip and tear because that's what we always do. Aldo buffs himself. And Minalka uses up one of his lives. The lives are that little hexa hexagon looking symbol, I believe. Is it a hexagon? One, two, three, four, six. Yep. So enemy Aldo has three lives left. Now if I use, I have three chivalries, he has three lives, which means if I use a chivalry each turn, when he runs out of lives, I run out of chivalries, but he still has one life left that final turn. So here on the second turn, I'm going to basically make use of Iffy's revive ability. So I'm going to overwhelm, I'm going to nocturnal procession, I'm going to improve type attack. And she is going to rip and tear. And my hope is that she does not get targeted for the attack and we use up a life. There's one revive. And there's the other revive. And unfortunately, he did not target Manalka there, so we've used up another Aldo life. Now, however, Stella Aldo has two lives left, and I have three chivalries. So, chivalry. At this point, it doesn't really matter. Let's just do a status immunity. Let's do physical resistance again, and rip and tear. There, I've cast Chivalry. She can't die. We use up another Aldo life. Chivalry. Uh, let's Rosa Liliac again. Let's uh, type attack again. Rip and tear again. Nothing enemy Aldo does is going to kill Radius. Minoka knock, knocks out another one of his lives. Final turn. We have one chivalry left. We will Nocturnal Procession it, we will Physical Resistance it, and Rip and Tear it. <laughs> Manalka does not die. And Aldo is defeated. So this strategy kind of works. It obviously showcases Radius's chivalry effects, 
Minalka basically, it's a little bit luck based. She can't be the one that's revived earlier because at final tech, she gets revived and she can finish off enemy Aldo. However, this video is to showcase Radius and that is one way Radius makes the Aldo series so, so, so much easier. In conclusion, Radius AS is an extremely powerful tank. The best way, in my opinion, to build her is to give her as much health as possible and ignore her speed. In fact, having a low speed does make things a little bit easier since so many of her abilities require a zone to be active. Then as long as she goes after the zone setter, which a low speed will kind of guarantee, then those extra features on her skills will take effect. As far as gear, you want to give her any gear that can give her health. Again, in my opinion, different people build her different ways. The Elpis Bangle is a great DPS bangle. If you have Minalka, it's really a great uh, piece of gear for her too. So, and if you don't have the Elpis Bangle, you just want to find other things that will either reduce damage over time or give her health, something along those lines. Uh, oriental bracelet will reduce uh, damage as well but anyway anything that gives her health is good as far as badges since I don't care about speed I just go to Toto's theater world ran it a bunch of times and got enough HP 2000 badges from there and yes yeah, she has a speed of 60 but who cares it seems to work for her Grasta wise anything that gives her extra health is good and as far as sidekicks, great sidekicks for her are Karobo, thanks to his power intellect reduction aura for anything that takes fire damage. And she is a fire user and her prominence purge is a fire attack. So you're pretty much, as long as you use prominence purge in the fight, which you will do probably at least once, that aura will stay in effect the entire time. Another good sidekick is Iridian either defensive Iridian or healing Iridian. And if you have Tetra, Tetra is a great sidekick as well. When she takes damage and drops below 80%, he gives her extra physical and magic resistance, which is her kind of weak area. And he gives her extra health and mana. So her health skyrockets. And because her health goes up by 25%, that means when she casts Overwhelm and gains her shield, her shield has even more health as well. So those are the three sidekicks I highly recommend. Tetra being the only one that's not free. But Radius and her chivalry, if it's used at the appropriate times, can make or break an entire fight. And as you can see, she makes some fights ridiculously simple. With her reactive healing and mana regen, if she gets attacked three, four, five times, you don't have to worry about mana ever again. Your team can just go on infinitely. And once she gets those shields going, as long as the damage intake isn't super powerful, she can basically survive anything, redirect most things to herself, and give her teams shields to try and help any AE attacks. So that's what makes Radius a really powerful tank. Anyway, I hope this helps you. Casual Chrono, signing out.